we have ourselves another Vancouver Canucks news package. Today we're talking about a few signings. Actually, no, not a few, just one. And a little bit of a discussion on Quinn Hughes, Elias Pettersson, and where they rank up amongst the best players in the NHL. So, if you're looking out here and you're interested in following all of that, then stay tuned because we've got all that and a little bit more. Catching up with yesterday, though, I appreciate all those who checked out yesterday's video on Tyler Toffoli and ended up commenting what I was asking you to comment. Kalamazoo, World War II, y'all spam the comments with that. You got a little bit of confusion going out there, which I think it's very cool to see. But... Again, we're going to have another one of these at the end of this video, so if you want to pay attention and check it out till the very end, then go ahead and do that. But the biggest piece of news of actual Vancouver Canucks related stuff happened yesterday. We had ourselves a signing. It's Tyler Grayovac, who re-signed a one-year $700,000 contract with the Vancouver Canucks. Now, Tyler Grayovac is indeed a guy whom we've spoken about before. We kind of made a few jokes here and there as to how he was one of the last remaining Tyler's on the team, because at one point in time we had ourselves Tyler Mott, Tyler Myers, Tyler Madden, and then Tyler Grayovac, and then we traded Tyler Madden for Tyler Toffoli, keeping the total Tyler count on the team at four with the Grayovacs, the Myers, the Motts, and the Toffolis, but Toffoli ended up leaving, so now we're back down to two because... Grayovac didn't have a contract, and then the Canucks re-signed Grayovac, so now he's back, so we're back up to three total Tylers on the team. However, for Tyler Grayovac, he's a guy who is on the older side of things. He's 27 years old, born in 1993, six foot five, 205 pound center, who played with the Vancouver Canucks starting off the 2019-20 season. He played a total of eight games. He had two goals, nothing really too special if you look at the game log. He played in the middle of November up until the start of December, then eventually got sent back down, played with the Utica Comets, 11 games, three points. He was a pretty good productive AHL scorer though, for the majority of his time in the Washington Capitals and Calgary Flames system. He had some prior success with the Minnesota Wild and the Iowa Wild, playing some games in the NHL, more so in the AHL, but he is indeed a guy who's had an up-and-down career. A lot of people are saying this could be another one of these signings for the Vancouver Canucks where they go out and they put him on the taxi squad, which would be a group of players that actually would be a part of the Canucks organization up here. They would be used for the purpose of being call-ups if guys got injured, because Utica is in America, and the travel restrictions right now crossing the border certainly are quite prevalent. So, having guys down there in Utica playing for the Comets would actually be kind of frustrating and overall complicated if, let's say, a Vancouver Canuck gets injured and they need to make a call-up or something. So, that's what the taxi squad is used for. Speculation has arisen as to whether or not Griovac could be a part of that taxi squad, but... Regardless, he still is a brand new Vancouver Canucks signee who is indeed coming back. On the ice, though, Grayovac was honestly pretty okay. Like, the point production isn't amazing, but like, he was playing as a bottom six center, six foot five. He's a big presence out there. He honestly was pretty okay. And if he's used next year as a nice injury replacement centerpiece option, then hey, I don't have a problem with that. Interesting notes, though, if you remember, Grayovac did score two goals with the Canucks, and they were both on the power play. The first one against Nashville was a nice little tip-in out in front where for some reason, I mean, actually, no, it makes sense. He's 6'5", of course, you put him in the front of the net for the power play. I think it was Quinn Hughes who threw the puck towards the goal and Grayovac was there. And then his second goal on the 2019-20 campaign was him, who took the puck in off the rush against Edmonton, and he ripped it over the goalie's shoulder. It was off the back bar and out. They actually didn't stop playing. They had to calm things down and review it, and they actually saw in the replay, okay, his shot did indeed go in. It's a goal. Tyler Grayovac has his second on the year. And, you know, if we see more of that next season, I don't know how I'd feel having Tyler Grayovac as our centerpiece power play guy, but, you know, weirder things have happened, right? But next up onto our big piece of Vancouver Canucks discussion, we had ourselves a little bit of a controversy with Elias Pettersson and Quinn Hughes, not because of anything that they did themselves, but because of the overall perception that they have around the league. Now, the NHL recently released their, uh, what was it, the top 50 players in the entire league list, and I'd be lying if I told you that it was the most widely well-received piece of material that the NHL has ever put out, because when it comes to the Vancouver Canucks guys, they had themselves what was a pretty nice showing of representation, I guess I would say. It's just... 
the ratings were kind of weird because Quinn Hughes was labeled as the 46th best player in the entire NHL. Which is cool, you know, having Vancouver Canucks make this list, have Elias Pettersson and Quinn Hughes both over here, it's a showcase as to how good they are in the NHL and what they've done to this organization in terms of producing. But Quinn Hughes was labeled here as number 46 in front of Patrick Laine, Max Pacioretty, Zach Wierenski, and Johnny Gaudreau. Ooh, great players right there, man. You know, I could honestly debate as to why Quinn Hughes is better than all of them, and I think... He actually kind of has a place in front of these players in terms of how good they are and how much value they hold to their respective teams. And before we go any further, I want to say that this particular piece of media with the 41 to 50 guys, Kachurie, Barzal, Latang, McAvoy, and Heiskanen, this was released on December 6th. The next group of players was released yesterday. So they've been doing this thing where they're releasing the picks a week in advance and it's like, okay, well, now we have ourselves a whole bunch of waiting to do before we get to number one and see Connor McDavid over there. But just on this right here, Quinn Hughes, is he better than Couturier? I don't know. Is he better than Barzal? I'd probably say no. Latang, eek, I'm not sure. McAvoy, uh, I don't know. Heiskanen, okay, you can debate Heiskanen. He's worse than, but... Just Quinn Hughes being right here and being on the number 46 spot behind all these other guys, it kind of got a lot of Canucks fans stirred up. Also, people were kind of ticked off that Heiskanen was behind McAvoy because McAvoy is better than Heiskanen, of course. But then we had ourselves what was actually released yesterday, where picks number 31 to 40 were revealed. Take a look at this. 31 is Ryan O'Reilly, followed by Seth Jones, Blake Wheeler, Kale McCarr, Kyle Connor, Connor Hellebuck, Dougie Hamilton, Elias Pettersson, Steven Stamkos, and Matthew Kachuk. And this is where people got kind of ballistic, because Elias Pettersson is at 38. He's in front of Stamkos and Kachuk. Oh man, why is Kachuk at 40? That's my question right there. But... Dougie Hamilton's at 37. He's better than Elias Pettersson. Today I learned that Carolina Hurricanes defenseman Dougie Hamilton is a better hockey player and he holds more value to the Carolina Hurricanes than Elias Pettersson and Quinn Hughes both do to the Vancouver Canucks. Thank you, NHL, for enlightening me on that. I get that he was really good last year and he produced like crazy, but... Is he better than Pedersen? Stamkos, even? I don't know. Next up, though, Kale McCarr was at 34, and people were kind of really ticked off that McCarr was at 34 and Quinn Hughes was 46, because the problem that people had with this was the fact that everybody was saying the entire year, oh, it's so close. McCarr and Hughes, they're so neck and neck, it's tough to differentiate the voting here, you know? But... When the Calder was announced, we saw the voting actually had Kale McCarr leading over Quinn Hughes by a huge margin. Despite the sentiment from the media being that McCarr and Hughes were so close together. Now, I have a sentiment for this that I want to address here, but I believe that that was the case because even though a lot of the voters had themselves a big, difficult decision to make when it came to McCarr versus Hughes, the fact is so many of them had the same conclusion where it was like, okay, McCarr was the better rookie, so I'll vote McCarr, but it was really close. But even though it was very close, and I think anybody who was actually voting could tell you it was very close, a big majority of people just had that conclusion that McCarr was the number one and Hughes was the number two. And frankly, I'm not surprised. The points per game, the points, all that stuff, it's very much in the favor of Kale McCarr, which is kind of what people look at nowadays. But even though it was a close thing to decide, Plain and simple, just more people decided that Kale McCarr was number one. But the fact is, even though they were so close, and I admit that right here, their values, their overall skill sets, it's very close. I don't know how Kale McCarr is 34 over here, but Quinn Hughes is 46. Call me a biased Canucks fan, but if you're saying that Hughes is just right neck and neck with McCarr, how in the heck is Hughes all the way back down there at 46? Obviously, I don't want to get super, you know, pissy about one NHL list, of course, but like... Come on, man. You have yourself some very good defensemen over here as well. Seth Jones, Kale McCarr, Dougie Hamilton, and then even on the next list, you know, you have Heiskanen and Hughes. How's Heiskanen all the way back here behind all these guys too? You saw this guy in the postseason. He's amazing. So, I don't know. NHL's coming back out here with some weird lists. We'll kind of fall things up as they go along. We saw Kevin Hayes as one of the guys who was better than Matthews and Pedersen and all them in a previous NHL list, so we'll cover this as it goes on. But talk to me in the comments about the Tyler Groovac signing, Elias Pedersen, and Quinn Hughes, and how exactly they're being represented here on this list. 
Comment down below if you've made it to the end of this video, 67 Wolverines, and I say that because Tyler Grayovac was on the Ottawa 67s for his OHL career, and Quinn Hughes played for the Michigan Wolverines in the NCAA. So that's our keyword in the comment section below. If you've made it to the end of the video, let me know by saying 67 Wolverines, but I hope you enjoyed this content over here, social.trollis99, and bye. <laughs>